because he is so worthy of all the glory and praise. And just thank God for another day that he has blessed us to be able to come in worship and come to the place of praise the first Sunday of the of the new month of August. We just thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his favor. And well, I want you to know that favor a lot of people say favor ain't fair, but I want to let you know that favor is fair because God is the one that chooses to favor us. And I just give God the glory and the praise for another day that he has made for us. We pray mightily for our church family, those that uh, are not able to be here this morning. We pray that God will strengthen you. We pray for those of you that are here that we might be able to focus on the things of God, that we might lift up the name of Jesus. And it is just a blessing to be able to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let us rejoice this morning. Let us make up our mind that we're just going to lift up the name of Jesus. We have a day in this building this morning to praise His name. That miracle signs and wonders will follow them that believe. We are just grateful to the Lord for all of you. And we just give God all the praise and glory. We thank God for our praise team who is in place. Our ministers and deacons that will be singing this morning. We thank God for them. We thank God for our ushers. We thank God for Lady Pippen. Thank God for our membership that is here and our membership that is absent this morning. We just ask God to have his way. And as we come together this morning, we're going to bow our head in prayer and we're going to move forward in our service. We thank God again for all of you. Let us pray. Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we come this morning, God. Lord God, you told us that where there's two or three gathered together in your name, that there you are in the midst. So Father, we know that you're not a man that you should lie, or a son of man that you should repent. So thank you, Lord God, that even before we got here, your presence had already shown up. Because you are omnipresent, that means that you're everywhere at the same time. And then, Lord God, we assure us this morning, God, you put it on our mind that you are to come into the house of the Lord. Lord, we don't want to go, we don't want to come through, Lord God, it, but we want to come, Lord God, rejoicing and knowing, God, that you have blessed us with this day. And Lord God, tomorrow is gone, or tomorrow we might not see, and yesterday is already gone, Lord God. We have now. So Lord God, let us live in the now. Let us praise in the now. Let us worship in the now, Lord God. We pray for those that are unsaved today, God. That somebody will make a choice to come home. We pray for the backslider, Lord God, that he will make up his mind and turn around and come back to you. We pray for those that are saved, God. That you would help us to root ourselves in you, ground ourselves in you, and not let be fooled by opinions and swayed by this, that, or the other, God. But help us to hold on to the Lord of the altar. Right now. 
church family. We pray for those that are Facebook family. We pray, Lord God, for this nation. We pray for this world, Lord God.
without him, you are nothing. All right. Yes. Hallelujah. I can't even I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Amen.
We're going to begin reading at verse number 17. Verse 17 of Revelation chapter number 3. Revelation 3, 17. Because thou said, I am rich, increased in goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, My God. and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold trodden in fire, yes. that thou might mayest be yes. rich, and, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, yes. and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eye salve, yes. that thou mayest see it. Yes, I'm going to stop right there. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If you were looking on the board, there, there, there's a theme in the quest that is asked. Is there room in your life for Jesus? Is there room in your life for Jesus? Brothers and sisters, we all sometimes have these busy schedules where we have we have appointments, we have family, we have things going on, then we have work, we have to make sure that the house is taken care of. Uh, we want to live our best life. We want to have all of the excitements and the funds, and there is nothing wrong with any of that. What is happening is, is that we have gotten so to the point where we have programmed our lives in such a way that Jesus takes a back burden. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right. And we only want to pull him out when trouble comes, mm -hmm. or when sickness comes, or when things get a little hairy, and, and and we can't, and our money can't fix it, and and, and, and us worried about it can't fix it. Then we want to pull Jesus out of the closet. All right. Yes. We have put him in such a little compartment in our lives that, that we have reduced him down to Sunday. Mm -hmm. Or we have reduced him down to a t-shirt. Right. Or we have re re reduced him down to a bracelet with the WWJD. We have reduced him down to the man of the state. All right. All right. All right. But then when trouble comes, we want to be like the genie. We want to rub him, and he's supposed to show up when we want him to. All right, all right. And what I want to encourage you with is, is that instead of him being a choice, he should be the only choice. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. All right. Amen. But because the world said, Get all you can and can all you get. Mm -hmm. We have taken on more, at, even in the church, we have taken more on of the world's way of doing things all right. than we have of Christ and the Christ in the life that we're supposed to have. And if he's supposed to be the Lord of our life, that, the Lord means that he is governing everything that we do. And he's not going to be, he's not going to be Lord of part of your life and not Lord of all of your life. All right. Have mercy upon us, Lord. And the question is, is that, is there room for him in your life? Or, or do you feel good just because you get up on a Sunday morning, you get dressed, and you come to church, and, and you put an hour or two in, and you say, well, I've done my weekly duty to make God happy. Or I, I went and, and, I, and I took a few dollars out of my, out of my bank account and I done something nice for somebody. Mm, all right. Mm. That gave me a check mark for God. Mm, okay. Or I let somebody cut in line in front of me at Walmart because they didn't have a couple of items. And so now I feel good about myself because I, I've, been, I've been nice. Brothers and sisters, what I need you to understand is God is not interested in a part-time relationship. No, he is. All right. He's not interested in you when things 
for good when you can go off and do everything you want to do. He, he's not interested that when trouble comes that you want to pull him in. He want to be in the celebration just as well as he want to be in the heartbreak. Because the Bible tells us that he is a jealous God. And just because he don't just deal with it right then don't mean that it don't break his heart when, when he said, I, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man would open the door and let me in, I'd come in and sit down with them. But can I tell y'all that breaks his heart? That when we done program him out of our lives? We've done it. We've done it. When we spend hours on Facebook, mm -hmm. hours watching TV, Jeez. sometimes 8 and 10 and 12 hours on the job, Jesus. just to come home and be tired and, and, and don't even worry about praying sometimes. We, and, and, and I'm just speaking because I'm talking to me too while we're talking because y'all think that when I'm standing here I'm talking to y'all but I'm talking to us. Yeah. All right. All right. God have mercy. Can, they, can you imagine that even in the place where, where God's supposed to be worshipped mm -hmm. called the church mm -hmm. that he have gotten so programmed yes. that God is sitting on the, on the outside and we haven't even invited him in. Yes, yes. We sing about him, we, we preach about him, we, 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 we do all these things about him, but is it really about him? Is he here? Yes. Oh my God. Good or is it we just fill in a quota? Ah. And I, I, I like to say that I, I promise you, I'm not trying. I, I'm just talking to us today because because what what we're finding is is that 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 church sometimes has become a social yeah. gathering. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, God. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. When we just come together, we don't we don't want change. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus. We want comfort. We want to be comfortable. We don't want, we don't want, we don't want the choir to say nothing to make us uncomfortable. We don't want the preacher to say nothing to make us uncomfortable. We don't want nobody to do nothing to make us uncomfortable. We just want to come to the house and we can be in our sins and stay comfortable. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh my God. And God is saying, I, 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 need, I, need, you to, I need you to not make room for me. I want you to give me the whole house. Yes. All but needless pain we bear. Yes. Yes. And the reason why we go through some of the things we go through is because we have we have pushed God away. And we tell people that he's a God of love. He, 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 he's such a loving God that he won't do us like that. But I'm so glad that God is not like me. We can program him out of his life and he'll still be saying, I'm still standing here knocking. I ain't going away and I'm going to stay right here and I'm knocking. But when, when God walks away from the door, that means that That we don't have no body. There's so many people running around now talking about I'm living my best life because I because I can I can vacate where I want to go and I and I can eat what I want to eat and I, I can party when I get ready to party. I can do what I want to do. And I and honestly I'm trying to tell you, if, if, if party's your thing, you party until it's 19, 2025 if you want to. But there's going to come a day when you're going to have to stand before God and you're going to have to give an account for the life that you live in. The choir says, I want to see Jesus, but everybody don't want to see him. He just asking you to let me in. Let me be what I'm supposed to be for you because, because God has a good plan for all of us. As a matter of fact, if you still live 
They call him the rich young ruler. He came to Jesus and said, Jesus, what can I do to gain eternal life? Jesus said, well, first of all, why are you calling me good? There's only one good, and that's the clock. I don't care how good we try to be, there's still none good but God. Jesus 
assure me that I can stand on this, stand in this pulpit and tell them they were crystal and they went home to be with the Lord. Now I have doubt in my mind. Because when you make room for Christ, people can tell people will know. But if you're not saved, then you have to draw the eternal church.
weaknesses that are in us that keep us from letting you come in completely, oh Jesus. Those things, we are asking you to move them out today. To pluck them up and throw them down and destroy them. In your name, Jesus, we ask you. And then we ask you to plan and build according to your will and your purpose for us in our lives. Help us to yield ourselves to you, Father.
My God. They were sending this ISAB all around the world, but Jesus said, you need to buy some ISAB from me. That's right. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that amazing what we think we got? God said, you, it, ain't, it ain't what we believe that I got something Amen. better. Amen. Lord have mercy, y'all are y'all y'all never gonna shut me down, but it's okay. Thank you, Lord. Yes. But they were they were getting rich mm -hmm. off I said. Yeah. Wow. That's right. And God said, even though you send this all over the place, he said, you need to see yourself. I need it. Yeah. Oh yes. But yeah. the but the I said you have is temporary uh, mind is good to help you see forever. Glory right. to God. Yeah. It's and then the other thing was is that they were making themselves rich with because they were selling wool. Well, so you, uh, you gonna you gonna sell wool and send it all over? He said, but you need to get a uh, you need to get a white garment that I that I prepared so you can put it on. So everything that, that the people thought that they had that was doing them some good, Jesus said, you know, you really need to buy it from me. All right. And so I thank God today thank that I've delivered what God would have me deliver. Amen. Our ushers Amen. are coming down to receive our offering and our tithes at this time. Um, one last thing, the, the, the green blue basket on Sunday will be, uh, on Saturday of this week, we will have a back to school and we're asking for any donations that we can get for a uh, basket, so that, uh, for book bags, so if you've got any dollars that you want, we'll be fine donating that will be anywhere. God bless you.
the gift, the gift and the ability to give. So thank you, Lord God, for everybody that walked in obedience, those that had a desire to give and didn't have it, those that had it and done it. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord God. Bless it now. Bless the giver. And Lord God, bless the finances that we might be able to do what needs to be done. And bless our usher, Lord God, as he continues to serve in the house. We love you. We praise you. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Y'all keep singing a little bit more if you don't know.